Hey, namaste, bitches. It's Teresa Judice, and I'm here with my co-host, Melissa Feaster. What's up, Teresa? What's up, our namaste, bitches? Oh, my God. Okay, Teresa. Yeah. I am so excited every episode to do this with you. I know. You're so excited. But today... I'm literally sweating. Like I need to like my I boob sweat. I have everything is sweating right now. I'm so freaking excited for today. <laughs> okay. Why? Why are we so excited, Teresa? Tell everyone. Well, because you guys, this is so super special. Not like Teresa getting married special, but for me it ranks up there because I don't know if you guys all know listening, but I started two years ago another podcast called Side Piece, and I cannot even believe it, but I am hitting episode 100 for my Side Piece podcast. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. So, Teresa, I was sitting there. I'm like, okay, who are like my top peeps? Well, Josh would rather, you know, walk through fire. And then jump on nails before he put his face in front of a microphone. (laughs) So he automatically was out. And then I was like, my girl, I got to get my girl. Yeah. So guys, because it's side piece 100th and it's so humongous and it's just like the ultimate, the ultimate, the ultimate. Well, I'm with the ultimate, the ultimate, the ultimate girl. And so to celebrate you guys. Are you ready for this? Get in close. Listen closely. Yes. Yes. We are doing Teresa's top 10 housewife (laughs) moments. Yay. Okay. So here's the thing, you guys. We are going to do five of them right here on Namaste Bitches. And then we're going to be doing five of them on side piece. So her top 10, five here, five on side piece. But you guys, the kicker is they're not in order. So sorry, not sorry. You have to listen to both to find out which one is where. Is it going to be nine, six? Three, one. I mean, who knows? What is it going to be today in Namaste, Teresa? We don't even know. And, you know, I would love to hear everybody's, you know, what they think it, what the order should be. Also. Oh, my gosh. Totally. You guys. Oh, my gosh. That is huge. Good call, Teresa. Yeah. You guys need to leave us a message, call us, email us. Because you know what? What if what the top 10 we're doing, what if we miss? like a Teresa monumental moment. And it's something dope that then in a later episode we could talk about. So, yes. Yeah, I would, I would love to hear what other people's thoughts are. Of, of your top 10, of your greatest, not even top 10, of just your greatest, greatest housewife moments. Let me tell you how difficult it was for us. I mean, Teresa, we could have right off the bat, I think we just went bam, 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 bam. And we already had like 15. I mean, we could have done this list like top 50. That's how good it, they are. <laughs> Your moments are. So Teresa, real quick, before we get into the iconic top 10 Teresa moments on Real Housewives of New Jersey, from the show, the episode that just aired. Yes. I wanted to ask you about and get into a little bit the whole Louis wearing your dad's pajamas and your thoughts. Let me ask you, what, what were your thoughts about that? I mean, and not because I knew we were going to talk about this because you just brought it up. I'm literally sitting in my grandma's probably 75-year-old pajama bottoms. Aww. I wear, so I wear my Baba, who recently passed, who was like my best friend. I wear her pajama pants. I oh, wear her top, wow. another top of hers. They don't match, uh, um, but it's dirty. I'm washing it. This is Josh's top. I wear everybody else's clothes. And then I sleep, I sleep on my Baba's pillowcase. Aww. 
And then on me, I have the blanket that they brought me home in from the hospital. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. So, so I'm probably the wrong person or the right person to talk about this because the, all that stuff is extremely meaningful. So you know it was coming from a good place. Like, again, coming from me. I just want a part of them on me, near me, around me. All right. Well, let me just clear up, like, you know, exactly what happened because I think it was misconstrued the way, like, the way Louis said it and the way, I don't know. If, but, like, I'll just tell you exactly you know, what Louis meant by that. His intentions and thoughts. Right. My father had a lot of brand new clothing that, you know, was never used, brand new with tags on them. You know, I was donating a lot of it, giving stuff away. And there was a pair of pajamas that were brand new with the tags on them. They were, I think, were Ralph Lauren. So I said, I said, oh, Louis, these were my dad's. So, and I just gave them to him. Yeah. So, but they were brand new. They weren't my dad's that he actually wore. And I guess he was like saying, just saying that to my brother, like, I guess he just was being very endearing to my brother and just to show him how much, like how close he wanted to be to our family, you know? And, and he said how that much to he my, cares. how much he cares. Exactly. Like, I know like Louis goes to the cemetery and goes and visits my parents oh and, my at gosh. the mausoleum. Yeah. So I know that it was coming from an endearing place and, and I, if, if anybody's taken that in a wrong way, that's very sad. And that's what makes me love him even more that it's coming from a good place. So, yes, yeah, so he, you know, I gave him a brand new pair of pajamas that my dad never wore. And um, he has them, you know, which which I love. But even if your dad had worn them. No, I know. I mean, I'm just saying, but, you know, I gave away all his clothing to a men's shelter that Dolores, matter of fact, donated for me. But would you have thought it was weird if he came out and he was wearing a pair that like your fa- your dad's favorite pair? Yeah. I mean, I, I just didn't think to give him that, you know, because I like, I, would you think that was weird if he came out wearing that? Like your dad's all like do these pants that I'm wearing. Yeah, but I would ha- I would have had to give them to Louis, but I wouldn't I probably wouldn't do that. But they were just a brand new pair of, you know, his pajamas that he never wore, like with a tag on them, you know. And you're giving him away anyway. Oh, yeah. So like, yeah. But I guess he was just just like telling my brother, like to show him how much he loved us and how much he loved the family. So that's the thing. Like, I I know Louis was coming from like a good place. And for my brother to whatever, to take it in in a wrong way is so not right. Well, but I think it was. It would have been anything, Teresa, anything that Correct. you said, You're anything right. that Louis said, You're right. anything that Juicy Joe said. This whole, the, all these months, it's like leading up to my wedding. It's like, you know, it's like one thing after another. It's yeah. like, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. I've never in my life ever thought I would ever experience something like this. It's so toxic, it's very disturbing, very disturbing. Like, I don't know like what's going through his mind. I really don't. It's just sad too, because it's not just like another season or it's not just like another whatever. I mean, this is your wedding and the moments, the most special moments, you know, the showers, the parties, the, you know, all this, the new house, like it's all these huge, yeah, these milestones, yeah, these milestones. Yeah. You know, these are like you had a lot of huge things happen the course of the last year from your house to your 50th, to, you know, your wedding. And it's just sad that the last all few months, this, yes, yeah. like leading up to my wedding. And it's like, it's been like, wow. It's like, instead of like your sibling being so happy for you yeah, and, and like lifting you up, it's like, you know, it's like, so it was turned, it was twisted. And you just have to know that anything that comes from you guys, it's going to be seen that way. And then regurgitated in a probably negative way. Louis was coming from a good place. Like I started out saying, I'm wearing my Baba's pajamas and who she actually used it and slept in it. So I see nothing wrong with it. Nothing was wrong with it. There was nothing but love and good intentions behind it. Yeah, no. So that's it. So I just wanted to clear that up. So that's it. Yeah. And and I love Louis like so much for like, I saw how much he tried with my family and it's so sad how, yeah, like, and how my brother even says, like, I'm going to treat you the way, 
like my, the way my sister treated my wife. I've never treated oh. Melissa the way my brother's treating Loey, like ever. Well, do you know what is amazing? Yes. That our top 10, Teresa, iconic, iconic, most amazing woman Yes, ever. I'm so excited to do that. Let's do that. From Real Housewives of New Jersey, there is nothing about your brother or sister-in-law on it because they are just about the most amazing, amazing moments, iconic, of Teresa, you, my girl, on the show. Eat myself and die, right? Yay! So, Teresa. Yes. You rank your moments. And we're going to kick them all off here. Let's do it. With number nine. And do you know what nine is? Besides being so fun like you, nine is posh fashion show times two. It is um, Danielle saying, don't call me honey. And you go. Oh, is bitch better? <laughs> well, <laughs> I didn't know if you were thinking about the other posh when I. Oh, well, we're doing that too. Oh, okay. So, that, so that's ranked in there? That's two. So this number nine is posh times two. So it's is bitch better. And then. Okay. It's so posh. yeah. So that was the first one. Yeah. Is bitch better. And then um, the second one is piece of shit coke whore every day. <laughs> Home wrecker. Oh, wait, wait. Coke whore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Coke whore. Piece of shit. Coke home wrecking. Home wrecker. Home wrecker. <laughs> Coke whore. <laughs> Coke whore. Coke whore? Is that Coke whore? <laughs> you thought of it. Don't ask me. Yeah, no. But you're saying home wrecker because of H. Whore yeah, is home w- wrecker every day for home E. Home wrecker every day. Right. Okay. How in the God's freaking name did you come up with that slice of heaven? Well, because I, you know, I looked at the word and I came up with the word with each letter. But you're, look at how long it just took us to say it. You are in the moment. You're heated. You're fighting. It's not like you just looked at a script. How did you remember in the moment when you're like at war? How did you remember that? Because I was like, I wanted to get her because I knew, I knew, like, I I had a feeling that she was good. Wait, did I know she was going to say that about Joe cheating? Did you feel like you knew if something was coming? I knew it was going to be something, you know? So I had that in my back pocket. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't come up with it at that moment. I'm like, you know, if she says something to you that I'm not going to like, I'm going to come back with her at, with that. And, I, and that's what I did. So you literally are sitting there. Look up, like I make signs and I put D-A-D-D-Y and D means this. A means this for daddy. So you're literally writing down P-O-S-C-H-T. Yes, I, I thought of, yeah. I, I mean, I didn't think about it at that moment. Like, yeah, I thought about it before going. Yeah, because the thing with Kim D is that me and her were friends. We were friends at one point. And then I just got blamed for all this stuff that I didn't even do. And it just really upset me, you know. And um, I got thrown in the lines then, not even knowing that I was like, what the hell is going on? Like when I didn't really, I really didn't know what was going on. I'm being honest with you. And I got blamed for stuff that I was not involved in. But I mean, it is what it is, and you know, I'm a big girl. Teresa, that's the, like the story of your of your existence. Yeah, so housewives. I'm a big girl. I can handle it. Getting blamed for everything that exactly. was not your fault. So it's like here I am, like wanting to know the truth. Also, I was like, because all the shit that was happening, I was like, is like I didn't even know. Was that from Stripper Gate? Yes. Yeah. That's how it started. No, well, that's how it all started from that. And I'm like, I didn't know any of that. And I got blamed for it. And I was like, are you serious? Like, I wanted to know the truth too. Cause I was like, like, I thought I was being lied to too. So it's like, and then I got blamed for, it. I was like, really, this is such bullshit, you know? And then after that, then there was other stuff. It was like so much stuff. I mean, I guess story of my life, you know, I guess, you know, story of your housewife's life. Yes, exactly. Everyone loves to come after Teresa Judice. And 
I guess they make, you know, I make, I make, you know, they get, they get good storylines, you know, coming after me. Because you know why they come after you? Why? Because we get golden number nine is fine moments like P O S C H E, baby. Yes, I know. Yo, real yes. quick, how long did it take you to think of that? You know, not long. It's easy. Like you see the word posh and then piece of shit, coke, whore. Home wrecking every day. You've made me snort three times already, and we're only one in. Okay, so then the is bitch better? That happened in the moment. Like that was in the yeah, moment. That was just in the moment because she's like, "Don't call me honey." I was like, "Really? Is it fucking bitch better?" And I'm like, "Oh my god, is bitch better?" <laughs> like, like that just came like right from my like from my head. Yeah, like I was like, "Really?" Like I was I was really being nice i'm surprised you didn't have a danielle thing d-a-n that would have been a lot d stands for no but i mean i I always call everybody honey so it's like don't call me honey and i was like oh really is bitch better you know and i was wait a minute but is bitch better than what led to you because then she um chasing uh, what led me to chase her because then she said that my house was in foreclosure and she ran away from me. And I was like, what? I was like, my house is not in foreclosure. So then she ran away from me. And then here I am trying to catch up to her because I wanted to know, like, why she was saying that. Like, I'm like, wh- I wanted to know. I wanted to know more. Like, why? Where's she come? You know, where's she getting this from? So I, she ran away from me. So I, I wanted to know from her, like, the truth. Like, where are you getting this from? And, like, she, you know, so that's why I was chasing after her. And then that's when Ashley yanked her weave. Yes. And I had nothing oh my to do God. with that one. Look at the snowball of events just from is bitch yeah, better. But like, yeah, that, but I think somebody told. Yeah, someone told her that Danielle like shoved Ashley or shoved or Jacqueline. Right? That's why Ashley did that. I don't know. Oh, shoved Jacqueline. Yeah, so then Ashley like was like that, payback. Yeah. So when you and Danielle down the road. When you guys had like your little makeup, remember, and she came back, did you guys ever talk about that moment? No, we never did talk about that moment. No, that's one moment we never talked about. Okay. Well, that is incredible. That's why nine is fine. And nine is Teresa's kicking off top 10 moments of Teresa Housewives history. Guess who started their own podcast? Whitney Rose, who you guys probably know from the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. It's pretty new, so you can jump in now and catch up quick. She is setting the record straight on the Housewives, has dirt on leaving the Mormon church, and she's got so many stories about motherhood, spiritual wellness, and more. It's sometimes serious. And sometimes a bunch of laughs. And I know you are going to love it. So check out Whitney Rose in the Wild Rose podcast. New episodes every Tuesday on your favorite podcast app. That's the Wild Rose podcast. Next, Teresa. We have lucky number seven. Do you want to know what lucky number seven is? What is it? Melania moment oh my god that's so much fun so many we have so that could be a top 15 itself so what did you think because here are some that i had when she calls the photographer during your photo shoot a butthole and tells him he's annoying oh my god (laughs) yes that's one moment when she tells joe daddy joe get me my pizza you troll give me pizza you old troll (laughs) She says, give me pizza, you old troll. Yeah. I don't know where she got that, where she got that from. And even butthole. Like, I'm like, what? Like, I'm like, I, I don't, we've never said that in the house. Like, I don't know where she got that from. The Gia, you're not a cooker, you're a hooker. Oh my God. When I heard that, I was like, what? I'm like, Melania, where did you hear that from? And I think she was saying it meets, it rhymed, you know? I was like, oh my God. Yeah, where do you, because I do that all, I feel like a lot of your scenes, you're like, Melania, Melania. Yeah, I know, (laughs) because I was like, I couldn't believe some of the stuff she would say, you know? Were you just like, I'm laughing, I can't laugh, but this is hilarious? Yeah, like I think... I don't think I was laughing when we were doing the photo shoot because that was like, 
I was like, oh my God. Cause you know, here I am working, like I'm, I'm shooting a f- photo shoot for fabulous desserts. So I didn't think it was that funny then. I don't think so, you know? And I'm like, and then did you see her? She's like, pictures, 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 pictures. I was like, oh my God. She was such a character. Like pictures, 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 pictures. Like she, oh my God. Like those moments, like I have to say, I'm glad I have those. Like, like those are great moments that like we're captured. So that's something she could always look back on, you know, like, cause that's Milani. Her personality is so amazing. Out of all four daughters, like she has the most outgoing personality. She's the most fun. She's the bunk. Yes. She's the most fun. And she's the most, she knows how to get the party started. Like she's the first one to, to get me on the dance floor. Um, she's like that. She's a fireball. She's like a mommy. She's so much fun. Like she's the life of the party. She really is the life of the party. Which is crazy because she was probably the closest to Joe, at least when he was going through all that. Yet I feel like she has so much of your like spitball, fun, life of the party, like crazy personality. Yeah. Yeah. No, she does. Cause, um, I love that. She really is so much fun. But I have to say all the girls are fun too, like in their own way. Oh yeah, of course. But you know, I can't see like Gabriella would never be like, hey, butthole. Yeah, no. Well, Gabriella, there was a moment with Gabriella. Joe took them for their karate scene, for their taekwondo class. And then Gabriella out of nowhere says, I'm hungry. Like during her taekwondo class. She's like, I'm hungry. And then Joe's like, well, not right now. Like, after- Joe's like, focus, girl. Yeah. She's like, he's like, oh, mommy, I have four like, girls. That's so cute. Like, cause like these are, you know, bloggers post all these scenes and I love, and then I send them to the girls. So they'll always have them, you know, as memories. Well, like when we were talking about this and we we're like, what were the exact words? Because I knew butthole was in there. And then remember you then were Googling and you send me stuff that has to be so cool. Like you, for you, I mean, and the girls, but you looking back and be like, look what my girl did. Like so dope, hilarious. Where do you think she got butthole and troll and hook her? I have no idea. Cause like, those are not words that we used to say in the house. So I don't know where she got them from. Like, really, I was just like in shock. Or when you freaking schlep and go all the way across the pond and you're on a cruise ship in Italy and you're like, Melania, it's your birthday. And she's literally snoozing in her princess dress in her food yes. at the table. Oh, my God. I remember that. Yeah, she, that was her fourth birthday. And I remember I was so upset because she fell asleep right before her birthday cake. And I was like, oh, my God, it's her birthday. And she fell asleep. And, oh, I didn't know what to do. But, like, I guess that's such a funny moment. Like here she is. It's like right when her birthday, he comes down and she's sleeping, you know? Remember when you tried to wake her up and she was like, get up. She was so pissed. She just wanted to sleep and you guys were trying to wake her up. Yeah. Like I remember being so upset. Meanwhile, like think about it now. It's like, that's a funny moment. you like, she fell asleep. But I remember in the moment, cause like I was all about like everything always being perfect and having like pictures and memories. And it's like, you know, not everything could be perfect, you know? You know, it's a good lesson, actually, not to go to serious mode, but it is a good lesson, especially with kids or just in life in general. Like right now, it seems like such a huge catastrophe right. and it's such a big deal and it's so bad and it's so catastrophic. But down the road, it's just it's like a pimple on your butt. It's just a blow. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, no. And it was just, it's funny now if you think about it. Like, she fell asleep right before her birthday came. Because, hello, we were in Europe. Time difference. The poor baby was tired, you know? She's four. I know. And she was tired with the time difference, too. We were in Europe. Well, we could go on and on. We need to do a top 500 of Melania's mayhem moments because that in itself is iconic. I know. I'm sure there's so many more of Melania, you know, that can be another one. You guys leave us a comment for all your favorite, because I see them all the time too. People all of a sudden are posting stuff from Melania when she was five and what she's saying, doing, and you guys, but all this stuff that we're talking about, don't forget, you can email us at namaste B podcast at gmail.com or give us a holla at 
424-241-0410 and leave us a voicemail of all the stuff, your favorites of the kids, your favorite of Teresa's. Because look, this could go into a whole other episode and conversation of pure delicious goodness. Yeah, I want I want to hear everyone's thoughts also. Yeah, and when you and your girls do so many iconic things, it's hard to remember everything. And also so, DM me if if you anybody's watching old episodes, DM me and I'll repost them. DM the clips to Namaste Bitches Pod. Oh, perfect. Yes. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, that was number 7. We are moving on to Number five, and number five is, all of them are super special, but this is super special, and it's with Nono living with you and the girls. Oh, yeah. And so much to start with, like so much to start with. So I always wondered, because, and you know, recently, randomly, I just saw that scene when you and Joe are at your parents' house after your mom passed and you're like, you know, daddy can't live. He, he can't live here by himself. Was there ever discussion between you and Joe? Like I'll take him. No, you take him. No, I'll take him. How did that play out? Cause obviously you got him. Oh yeah. No. I mean, my father just right away. He said, God, you know, I'm not living alone. And obviously I knew he was just going to come by me. You know, I mean, listen, you always stick with the daughter, you know, like it's, yeah, you're right. Daughters it's never very, leave. It's very rare that you go be with the son um, unless, you know, I mean, I mean, I'm sure there are circumstances like that, but um, I mean, me and my dad, you know, we're really, really close. Was Joe like, no, but I'll take him. No, not, no, not at all. <laughs> not at all. He no. He was like, I'm good. You go, Teresa. Yeah. I mean, he, he never even said anything. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like, you know, and that's the thing. It's a lot of work also. And it falls on the woman. Like, yeah, and it's sure. like my, you know, it's like and my brother works. So everything falls on us. It falls the wife, on the woman, the woman. The most. And, and like, that's the thing. Like, I'm his daughter. Like, you know, Melissa's his daughter-in-law. It's not the same. I mean, it's very rare for, you know, a daughter-in-law to take all that, you know, responsibility. It's, not, it's hard you know? being yeah, a caretaker. It's a lot. Caretaker. It's yeah, it's hard. a lot. So that's what I mean. So it was like automatic, um, like, you know, fell on me, of course. But, I, you know, I was totally fine with it. I can't believe you were a full-time caretaker to your dad who didn't have the best health. And, and you had four young kids. And wasn't that when Joe was gone? Yes. Yes. Because it was, it was my mom passed away. And then he just, he didn't want to be alone in the house without my mom, you know? You know what, you guys? This is a side note, and this has nothing to do with me talking to Teresa. And Teresa obviously didn't tell me this. Teresa, no one tells me what to say, ever, period, the end, not even my husband. And he tries to, I laugh in his face. (laughs) You guys, let me tell you something. Side note, love or hate Teresa, okay? All you haters out there listening to me right now, please take note of this. Whether you love or you hate her, you have to, to respect her. Because as a mother, as a daughter, as a sister, for Teresa to do what she did, and you know me, I'm not blowing smoke. I'm just stating facts. Teresa lost her mom. So she's grieving, takes her dad full time. Her husband is in jail and she's a single mom of four kids. You guys, you want to hear facts? Those are the facts. So you think about it yourself. Could you handle all that? Could you even handle a parent passing and just deal with that? And then taking care of your other parent and then having your husband gone for years and then taking care of four kids. Oh, and by the way, all while working to bring home money to support all those people you're taking care of. So again, Like I say about sports and athletes, even if you don't like an an athlete, you have to respect their skill. This love or hate Teresa, you got to respect that game. Okay? Sorry. That was a side note. Thank now you. I'm all fired up. Thank you. I mean, listen, I'm fired I, up. I'm sweating again. It's No, it's okay. I mean, listen, you know, I don't, 
act that way. Of course you don't. And that's why I said it, because you would never say that. It came very natural, you know, to just have my dad live with us. And, uh, and you know, what? I think um, by him being with us, it just kept him going because he knew, you know, we needed him too. Like we loved having him. And I think my girls kept him like wanting to live, you know, my daughters. Yeah. His grand, his granddaughters, because he really wanted to go be with my mom. He was like, he didn't want to be without her. And I mean, I remember the first year he cried like every day. The first year it was so hard. Did the girls see that a lot? Oh yeah. Yeah. And my dad became such a, such a softy. I remember growing up, he never cried. I now wasn't allowed to cry. And then it's like, you know, after my mom passed, he became like so soft. And he became soft after after I got married when I had Gia. That's when he became really and then when Gia started telling him she loved him. Oh my God. He like he was so cute. Like he kept always told her he loved her. It was so it was adorable. You know what? It's because uh, you had said that in a, a passing moment, and I never asked you about that because you said that my parents never told me, like, I love you. Yeah, growing up, they never told me they loved me. They, I always, I knew they loved me, but they never would tell me, like, verbally. Yeah, until after I got married, and then I had Gia, and then I would have Gia tell them. And then that's when I started telling them and then we started telling each other. So you started, you broke the cycle and you started it with your kids. Yes. Yeah. And so, so then really your kids, the sunshines are what got your, your dad and your parents doing it. Yes. Yes, they did. So then when he moved in, was it always like, uh, did you start saying I love you a lot back and forth? Yeah. And then especially like when, um. Yeah, like when I was away. Well, then I had all the kids. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, that we always said it then. Always, you know? So it kind of made it seem when he was moving in with you guys, it was maybe temporary. Like just to get him over the hump of your mom passing and like get him back on his feet. Or did you know like this is it? He's never going back home by himself. No, I knew he was never going to go back home by himself. You knew like this is it. This is permanent. You're going to be here with me forever. Yeah, because as soon as he moved in, like my brother, he told my brothers to sell the house. Like I knew he wasn't going back there. Oh, wow. Okay. So that was it. It was permanent. Yeah. I mean, are you so happy though? I know it was a lot for you because you're seeing him and his health isn't great. You're a full-time caretaker, you know, one more person you're taking care of though. But like, were you so happy that then your girls got that time and those moments with him? Oh yes. So happy. And my kids, um, like they cherish all the moments with him, you know, like he would cook for us, like he, cause he had nothing to do. So he would go food shopping every day and cook home cooked meals for us. We saw him cooking all the time. Yeah, so it was great. Like that was like the only thing you know that he would do. But like he enjoyed doing it. And then I would do it with him also. Like I would go food shopping with him sometimes or sometimes he would do it on his own. And then we would cook together sometimes. He would cook, you know, the girls would always see him cooking also. So they were, you know, they used to help him too. So it was adorable. Yeah. Did any of the any one of the girls in particular really pick up a love for cooking because they saw Nono do it so much or were in the kitchen with him often? Gabriella. She did? Yeah. They did they cooked a lot together. Gabriella and Gia, they would, you know, they would help him. Yeah. Well, because Gia was super close. Yeah. Gabriella got into like she was getting into the cooking and baking, you know, that's what she would do. Yeah. But your mom cooked too. So when it was your mom and your dad in their house, who was the one that cooked the most? They would both cook, but my dad started cooking more, more with my mom because then my mom got rheumatoid arthritis. So then my dad was like helping her a lot. So your dad kind of took over. Yeah. So he, they would both do it. But yeah, my dad would help her a lot. I think my dad, my dad would do the dishes. It'd be so cute. Yeah. Uh, they had their system. Yeah, they had their system. Exactly. So how long did he actually live with you? Three years. Wow. Three. There yeah. You go. There's, three, yeah. Three. The three. Yeah. Three. That's your number, man. Yes. Three. Unreal. And, well, he, and he passed away April 3rd. My mom third, passed away March right. 3rd. It's all threes. Four, three, three, three. Yep. That's right. We just had your mom. I was just talking to your mom. Yeah. 
and your dad's coming up. Well, listen, that's another iconic, iconic, iconic one. We could do a no-no top 100. Yeah, like I think, remember, remember when he was cooking the octopus? That, uh, that was, oh, my and God. And that was so not planned. He was just making an octopus that day. And then they get it on camera. I think everyone loved that scene. Were the girls like, no way in hell? Yeah, I mean, they knew. Like, I mean, they weren't surprised by it. Did he always cook crazy stuff? Yeah, I mean, my, the, he would cook rabbit. My kids liked rabbit. I, I used to eat rabbit when I was little, but then I stopped eating rabbit. And then, um, but yeah, the girls love rabbit. Incredible. Well, you guys, send us more of Nono's best moments. We all would love, love, love to see. Now, we are moving on to number three. And Teresa, it is one of my all-time favorites. The table flip. Yeah, I think everyone's ultimate favorite. <laughs> okay, shoot. Where do we even freaking start with the table flip? Okay, so you're sitting there at the table, first season ever. What were you freaking thinking? Nothing. I was just like, what the hell is going on at this dinner? Like, you know, it, like, like I, all of a sudden... She, we're sitting there and she gets, she bends down, she grabs a book and she puts it on the table. That we heard Carlos King crawled under the table and gave it to her. Yeah, I didn't even know Remember that. Remember producer yeah, Carlos? I, I, I swear I didn't even know that. So she puts on the, you know, cop without a badge right on the table. And I was just, and then we're all like looking like, what the hell? And I've heard of, and I heard about that book, you know? So then she puts it on the table and then... I was like, what the hell? I didn't even know what was going on. Because, like, really, I wasn't involved with all that. It was more like Dina, Caroline, Jacqueline. They all knew about this book. I didn't even know about the book. See, once again, it falls back to you, and then you have to light this shit up. Yeah, so then all of a sudden, then she's going after Dina. And then I was like, I didn't like that she was going after Dina. And, like, you know, Dina's my friend. So, of course, I'm sticking up for Dina, you know, because Dina's not a fighter. And then that's when I got involved. And then out of nowhere, oh, I'm Lord. the type, like, I take it, I take it, I take it. And then the smallest little thing could set me off. Fireworks. Yeah. So she's, that year, she did a lot to me. Like, she insulted me a few times. Like She was poking the bear. Yeah. Like, she kept saying, like, like we were at this dance class. And she's like, don't talk to me like that. I'm not your wife. And she was trying to insult me, like that Joe. Oh, Joe, yes. Joe talked to me in a, in a rude way. She just kept poking, 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 and enough, that was enough. The straw that broke the camel's back was when she said to me, pay attention, please. And I'm, I was like, pay. Oh. And I just thought that was so rude. Like, when she told me to pay attention, and, I, and then that's when I went crazy. Like, that smallest thing, like, just pay attention. That's enough. That, like, like you just, said, yeah, that just the cherry on top is all you need, baby. That made me explode. Like, I just didn't like the way she said, pay attention, P Teresa, pay attention, please. And then that was it. I fucking went crazy. Okay. So you do but it. There was like a lot of stuff that led up to that. Like, it, it, I just didn't, you know, it wasn't just that. It was just like a lot. But that's how I get, even with my kids, you could ask them, like, I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it. Then the smallest little thing, they'll be like, really, Ma? You got mad over that? Yeah, because I, you know, it was, it's it was a build a season. Up. It's a build up. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it was a season of, be, of the b the bear being poked. And now you're like, okay, now the bear is woke, bitch. And here we go. Yeah. So Joe calmly, he's just like, oh, there's my wife. He's pulling you back. You're ripping his balls off. What are you screaming? Oh, do you remember? Yeah, because she came, she came to my shore house, and I felt like she was being inappropriate in front of my kids. Like, and she was having sex with like the, that young guy, Steve. So I just oh Steve, yes, Steve that was on the show. Yes, yes. So they were boning in the shore house yeah. with all your kids there. Yes. So then that just I I just started mentioning that because that pissed me off, you know. <laughs> Yeah, so that's why I'm like coming to my shore house, and then that's what I was saying. Oh, so see all the moments. Here they are. You're screaming them out. Yeah. So at the table of all the cast, the chicks, 
Who do you think was like the most shocked that you did that? I think everybody was shocked. Everybody. They were like, who the hell is that? Yeah, I think every because I've never, they've never seen me act that way. And I was shocked at myself because I've never done that either. So I was like, afterwards, I'm like, oh my God, I was like upset with myself. I'm like, I'm like, what did I do? And I was really upset. Like, I, it's not like I was proud of myself. I wasn't. Right. And that's why, like, it became this meme and I had that with that mean face of me. Like, so the, I know. You know that's why I think everybody would probably say it's number one for them. But for me, I just don't like that mean face that's everywhere. I know because it, you're not mean. Yes. It was just a moment. Yes. You know, it was a moment. You, again, like you said, enough is enough. I like, you're going to only poke me for so long before I take a sledgehammer back to your ball sack. Yeah. And then it's so crazy that year, like I was on the Emmys. They played the video on the Emmys and I was just like, wow, that's like, it was like so surreal. Crazy. You know? Look yeah. Look at that. The most, it's season one. You want to talk about real housewives. Like, this shit doesn't get more real than that. I know. Back then, like, if they were having awards, I'm sure I would have won, you know, but they you know, they weren't given awards back then for reality TV. So I remember, remember we talked to Louie and he, when he started dating you, he started watching the show. Did Louie, after he watched that scene, did he ever say anything to you? No, no. Um, no, I'm sure, I'm sure he heard about the table flip. Like afterwards, you know, he wasn't laughing or like, holy shit, look at my girl back then. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure, like, he we never talked about it, but I guess he knew, like, don't fuck with Teresa. And I'm like, yeah, I'm sure he probably said that to himself, like, I better not mess with her. You oh know? my god, amazing. Okay, well, I know a lot of you, like Teresa said, that's probably your numero uno, but. We are only at ta- at table flip number three. And do you know what is next, Teresa? Number one. Number one. This is number one for me. For Teresa. This is, of all her seasons and years on Real Housewives of New Jersey, you guys, you are hearing it from the table flipping horse's mouth. Number one moment. Of her whole housewives, career, life, everything is. Teresa, do you want to say what it is? Yeah. Um, drum roll, please. Um, drum roll. Oh, you do it again. You do the drum roll. Like, uh, I'm not banging uh, a penis. I don't know. Like, like, like that? Um, all right. It's the birth of Adriana. What? Yeah. Like, I can't Number believe it. I actually one. pushed her out. And then the cameras came in after I pushed her out. Oh, my God. Okay. Yes. Okay. So let's back that train up, baby. Let's. Okay. Oh, my gosh. My mind was spinning when this happened. And then thinking about this moment. Because on the show, Teresa, you remember, they only show you screaming once and all of a sudden you hear a baby. Yeah. I'm wait, wait, now I'm just thinking about another time. Like I got my boobs out on the show too. That's it. That, that. Oh, your bubbies. Yeah. I forgot about that. See? See my bubbies. Yeah. I you got- guys. Okay. We're going to have to do an extension on Namaste. An episode is going to have to be these ones. See, just sitting here, Teresa, you're thinking of another one. And by the yeah, way, cause like th- I would have never done that if it wasn't on the show. Because I was terrified. I've never had an operation before in my life. So that being on the show gave me the guts in order to get my boobs done. Because I, I didn't think I was going to have a fourth kid. So that's why. So I thought I was done with my kids. So then here I am. I, I'm on Housewives. And we'll go back to Adriana. And then here I am first season. And I'm like, you know what? This is a great thing to do. Like it gave me the courage to like, because I really was insecure about my body. And after I gave you know, after I breastfed three babies, like my boobies looked like I didn't like the way they looked. So I I only would have sex in the dark. (laughs) Yeah. I wouldn't have sex with the lights on. Would you go topless or would you wear a bra having sex? Yeah. I would keep my shirt. Like I wouldn't feel comfortable. Like I would, I was insecure. Like I didn't like the Uh, way my boobs looked like, but was Joe like, take them off. I want to see those babies. I liked, he never said anything about my boobs. Like I liked my boobs. They were little. Like I like itty bitty titties. I like them little, but then after I breastfed, they looked 
Like I didn't. They're like, like they pancakes. Were, yeah, they were. They were. Empty They're like on, droopy pancakes. They were empty droopy. on top and then just full on the bottom. It was like, yeah, I didn't like. I hated hated the way they looked. And I didn't feel sexy. Do your boobs hang low? Do they wobble to and fro? Can you tie them? No. Yeah. So then that's what made me get boobs. Like, cause and then the show helped me. It gave me the courage to get them. And then after I got them. I felt really confident with my body. You're a new woman. Yeah, like I just, I like them. Understood. Listen, you got to do what makes you feel good. Right. And it made me feel good. Like it gave right. me confidence. And Let's go. Let's take this shirt off, baby. Yeah, and then I had no problem walking around naked, <laughs> showing my body. Yeah, and then I was like, you know, I like that. You know what? I can't believe of you and I, all we do is talk about boobs. <laughs> How do we miss that? Between us two perverts. Yes. How do we miss that in the top 10? So, yeah. So, okay. So that was, well, sorry, we talked about that with booze. And then Adriana being born, like. Oh, yeah. The baby. I, mean, I love how we go from you giving birth so to Adriana, getting you titties. Yeah. Like, so I <laughs> never thought I was going to have a fourth baby. I mean, that was like crazy because we tried to have a boy and we did that whole, I told you that we tried to do a boy. Yeah. Tried to have a boy. So they took his sperm. They took my eggs. They, they made an embryo and then they put it in and they put it inside me. I didn't even get pregnant. They put three embryos inside me. I ne- I never even got pregnant. Adriana was a miracle, man. Your miracle. So no, baby. and then we just said let's just do it the normal way, whatever God gives us. So we did it the normal way and it was another girl. And I couldn't be happier. I love girls. I I love my girls. You were meant to have girls. Yeah. And look, now I have two stepsons, you see? And now you have the boys. But what? Okay, so we only see a push. How long was labor? I don't think it was that long, to tell you the truth. Like, I, you know? Yeah, it wasn't that long. So the cameras just waited and waited and waited and waited outside? Yeah, they just were waiting outside, yeah. Until you were, like, going. And then they started rolling. You see me going to the hospital from home. Like, I... I go wake up, Joe. I'm like, all right, it's time. And then so the the cameras the cameras follow us to the hospital. Yeah, and they're with us the whole time. And then, then we saw you get the epidural and yeah. asked Joe for jewelry for giving birth again. Yeah. <laughs> You're pushed present. So then what's Joe doing the whole time? Is he eating a sandwich? Is he like when, playing to when? Keto? When? when he's when he's in there with you, what is he doing? He's by my head and like just telling me to push and whatever he's telling me to do. No, the whole labor before it really starts cranking, before you're starting to like get her out, what is he doing this whole time when you're kind of just like hanging out, waiting for her to come? I, he's just hanging out with me. He was just there with you? Yeah. Was he like, Tree, get the baby out already so we can go home? Um, No, I mean, you know, he just, you know, no, he, he, he was always very like relaxed, you know? And just was, you know, there to support me. And that's it. Yeah. Were the cameras like, oh, wait, we didn't get a scream on camera. Can you scream again? And we'll do that as like you're giving the birth. No, they all, they got it the way it was supposed to happen. That was actually you screaming for real, pushing her out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So what did you think when you saw for the first time the edit? Like when you watched that scene? Was it good? Did they edit it well? Yeah. Or did you like it? Yeah, yeah. It, it was totally fine. Yeah, it was good. And then I dressed her up in her leopard outfit. So cute. So since you didn't find out the sex of the baby pre-having her, were you shocked it was another girl? Was I shocked? No. I mean, I really wanted another girl because I had three girls. So I was like, I wanted it to make it even. Because I figured I wanted them to have each other. Could you imagine if that fourth was a boy? I can't even imagine you with three girls and a boy. Oh, you were just meant to have girls. Exactly. We were meant to have girls. Yeah. And I, and, you know, and even now, like I look at Adriana, I'm like, you know what, Jen? I'm so happy I had you. You're so beautiful. She's Perfect. Such a, she's such a good daughter. You know, just perfection. Yeah. And you know what really else to do? It worked out in the way it should have because, you know, boys, especially when they're younger, they're always more attached to their dad. Like Logan is needs to be on Josh's side at all times. Like I just feel Joe went away for so long and then he couldn't come back. I think that would have been so much harder had you had a boy. I mean, of course it was hard for the girls, but you know what I'm saying? Like boys are just like, Daddy is everything, right? Oh, really? I feel like girls are attached to their dads more and the boys are attached to their moms. Oh, my God. 
Logan wants like no part of me. Oh, okay. See, I, I always feel like boys are attached to their moms and girls are attached to their dads. Well, maybe people just don't like me. So that could be true. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, do you believe that we just hit Teresa's top one moment of her whole world on Housewives history. Yeah, this that's mine, but I'm sure a lot of people would go probably with the table flip. You guys, I, I this is just so iconic. This is so huge for me. This is so fun to do it with Teresa, you know, to do the recap of Teresa with Teresa. So for the rest of the top 10, you have to go check out Side Piece Podcast because then Teresa and I will be recapping, what is that? The the 10, 8, 6, 4, and 2, we will be talking about those top moments on Side Piece. And again, let us know what your favorite Teresa, girls, anything moments are, because this could be such a fun another episode, Teresa, like going into the boobies, the, the bubbies, like all that stuff. Yeah. The scene when you're talking about it with Joe at dinner, like you just said, oh, it's going to rain tomorrow. And he's like, okay, cool. And then you keep feeding the kids. Like there's so much more I think we're missing. So remember, you can email us, namasebpodcast at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail, 424-241-0410. We want to hear your thoughts. So this is so freaking fun. You guys, thank you. Thank you to Teresa. Yes. Thank you guys. And I can't wait to hear what your top favorites are. Thank you. You guys, this, I was like, I couldn't even sleep last night. I was so freaking excited. Thank you for listening as always. Thank you for listening every single Wednesday, tuning in. We love you guys. Don't forget to follow, rate, and review Namaste Bitches. And you can go and click on side piece to wherever you get your podcast and give us a follow on Instagram. That's at Namaste Bitches Pod, Teresa at Teresa Judice. And I am at Melissa Easter. You guys, this monumental one, unfortunately, is coming to an end. But tune over to side piece for the rest. And we will talk about all your favorites on another episode soon. We will see you. We love you. And we will see you next Wednesday.